Hey guys, it's Toby Morrison from CFS Health and on the other end of the video is Emma. Hello, Emma. Hi. <laughs> now, Emma, um, tell everyone where, you, where you're from. Um, I am from Edinburgh in Scotland, but originally I'm from Kirkcaldy and Fife. There you go. I'm sure there's a few people watching going, I'm from there too. <laughs> yeah, we get everywhere, us Fifers. <laughs> now, I've, I've, we've worked together for a while. I think like um, in this in this program, I think it was like, I don't know, 15 months or something like that or 12 months. Um, but it took me a little while to get used to your accent, I have to say. <laughs> You're lucky it wasn't a Glaswegian accent. I didn't know that. But you, I talk quite quickly. Probably you talk, so you talk quite quickly. You talk quite quickly, and you talk a lot. So <laughs> we we used to have a time limit sometimes uh, for the guys who are watching. Emma went through our um, online recovery program to overcome chronic fatigue syndrome, and um, in our group coaching calls, you can ask questions and stuff. And Emma was so great because, and, and we share as well, you know, like members would jump on and share their advice of what they've learned to members who needed to learn what they were going through. And you were so good in so giving in that way. And, you know, that sometimes those, those two minute conversations went into 20 minutes, but, it, but, but know, we all I'm loved not. it. So there's never a bad thing. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to do it, but I just, uh, yeah, it's just a bit like Billy Connolly, you get lost uh, as soon as I start talking and my brain kind of thinks of something else while I'm talking and yeah, yeah I know. Well, I know. I'll keep you on track tonight, okay? Um, yeah. The purpose of the, this uh, interview is really to share with you guys that, uh, who have stumbled across this, uh, to share hope um, most importantly and also just learn a little bit about Emma's um, backstory and journey through, um, you know, this really hard illness and the light at the end of the tunnel and um, how she's experiencing life now and how she's feeling. So thanks so much for um, jumping on. I really appreciate it. Thanks for asking me. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a privilege. Um, now, before we hit the record button, I was looking at you, you've just got a haircut. You look brilliant. And I was actually wondering your age and you said to me, you're turning 50 next year. Is that right? No, Toby. No, I'm 48 in March, so I'm 47 now. So you got a, you got three more years till the big 5-0, which will be fun. Hopefully the pandemic will be yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Celebrating yeah. Oh, yeah. hard. Yeah. Um, but you look incredible. And uh, and you said on the weekend you had a family gathering and there was a photo of you with everyone. And it was like it was like the first time in a long time where you looked at you like, wow. You know, not in an arrogant way, but just like it was almost like shocked you of how well you looked, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and happy actually happy as well yeah and I, I mean one thing I you know I sort of wrote a list last night of just various things that I, you know to sort of ahead of um doing this just now yeah. and and actually I thought you know I go to bed even if I've had a day where I've just sat on my backside and not done a huge amount um which I used to talk about a lot because it used to really annoy me when I did that when I was ill yeah uh, but I go to bed kind of feeling content every night, you know, I, I don't know, just, just kind of happy with life and, and content. Well, not, not even happy because you can't be happy all of the time, but just content with my lot and, and at peace, I think is maybe the, that's maybe a better way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I'm at peace now much more than I ever was. Mm. Um, and the mental side of things for me was much more, you know, probably where I had more difficulty, I think, than even the, the sort of physical and um, side of things. So, well, you, yeah. you had, um, you know, I know for a fact, like some of the problems that you had with, yeah, definitely those mental aspects of when you spiral, when you're feeling really crap and your symptoms are flared up and you're feeling terrible and then you kind of, you can get into that negative mindset, not just you, but everybody. And, you know, that was a big problem for you, I know, throughout the calls that yeah. we had. And then the other aspect was your sleep. I remember big time yeah. sleep and your nutrition really um, played havoc for you and you were you were good enough to turn that around over time. But let's go back. So, because everyone probably thinking, hmm, you know, she looks fine. Like, did she even have it? Um, can you tell me before you joined the program um, and when you were kind of struggling on your own, what, what, just what was it like just in a, in a one minute nutshell kind of thing? 
Well, I mean, the first, the first year that I had it, I sort of started out with really bad shoulder pain and um, and then I, saw, and I was trying to stay in work because I'd had, you know, my ovarian cancer scare and I was trying to get back to work after that. But I think what caused the ME was the ovarian cysts that I had that were full of infection and pus and whatnot and that, you know, so like glandular fever or whatever. So that, yeah. but anyway, um, I was trying to get back to work, so that was really difficult. And then just this this exhaustion hit me. And anybody that has, you know, ME, CFS knows what the fatigue is like. And I couldn't get out of bed. I think probably for about three or four months, I was completely bed bound. I live on my own. Um, you know, I, I don't live with my, my boyfriend and my parents are sort of 40 minute drive away. So I, I just, I couldn't brush my teeth. I was in pain. Um, I had to lie with the curtains closed because light hurt my eyes, you know, sound. Um, and it had to be a quiet room. And I, at one point, I actually um, started to think, how how would I how would I go about ending this? And I wouldn't ever have done it, but I started having those sorts of thoughts because I thought mm. that this isn't a life. This is just existing. Mm. And it's not even that, you know. Um, so it was just it was it was dire it was just absolutely horrendous and then I think somehow probably because I'd I was signed off sick by then so I wasn't in work um that probably gave my body the the ability to get a bit of a tiny tiny bit of energy back mm. um but it was it was just it was just horrific you you can't yeah I mean anybody that's sort of feeling like that now I, I totally get it I totally totally get it because it, it just it's like a living hell and you're you know and I remember your mum as well like I think your mum was kind of emailing on behalf of you at one stage yeah to, yeah like, she was that's right and yeah, spoke to you on the phone yeah mm. we must have spoke on the phone that was a, mm. a long time ago but you know she was she was so lovely and sweet and you know it doesn't just affect you it really does affect family yeah and it's yeah. Um, it's really tough. So all the parents out there, you know, we, we feel for you too. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, as your mum's seeing now and, you know, you went to that party on the weekend and she was like, yeah. so nice to have your, you, you you're back. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, you've been back for a while now, which is cool. So, um, so how long in total were you struggling for? Um, I think uh, probably about 18 months, I think. I think it was maybe... So it'd be the whole of 2016. And I, I think it was sort of probably around 2017, you know, you're going on. The, and I knew I what I had before I was diagnosed with it. I think a lot of people with this illness do, sure. you know, and because it's the, the, the it's the sort of um, exclusion diagnosis, well, it can't now be anything else, so it has to be that. Yeah. But I knew for months. So I think it was probably maybe spring or summer 2017 when I finally sort of came across you. Um, and I think it was just just internet searching. I, I, I think that's probably what it was. Yeah. Um, and I'd looked at other programs, but then because you have a lot of content on YouTube that's free, um, you know, I, I looked at all of that to begin with, and and then then thought, no, this is this is the program that or this is the thing that I want to be doing you know at the exclusion of, of all others but yeah I was totally on my own because here in, in Edinburgh there is a, a a clinic an ME clinic that you can go to but it's just sort of lifestyle there's nothing really but the waiting list for that is huge um and I think I was on your program long before uh before I got onto onto the the NHS you know the National Health Service thing here yeah um, but well, yeah I was struggling on my own We've had that a few times, actually. We've actually got a member at the moment. She she was on a waiting list for the NHS and she just said, I don't want to wait. I just want to start now, which is such a great idea. Yeah. But you know what it's yeah. like when you wait and wait and wait. What are you waiting for? You know, like you're yeah. just yeah. pushing. And so getting doing the right things at the right time is really um, important and helpful. So And she's doing great now. I can report she's back Good. working and stuff. So, oh, um, fantastic. So... Um, what was it like? So, yeah, what was it like when you got diagnosed? Like, because there really isn't much help 
surprisingly, um, still to this day. This is why we do what we mm-hmm. do. But what, what was it like, you know, for you when you got diagnosed? Was it a relief or was it more just like, shit, what do I do now? Um, I, I think, do you know, I honestly don't even really remember. I think it was <laughs> yeah. more just like, yeah, well, I've been telling you that for a bloody year. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's just, it was just ludicrous. It, it just, just, and I know that's, that wasn't my, my doctor's fault. That's the, the system. You know, it's like, I've been telling you for a year, this is what I have. It was nothing to do with my cancer scare or any of that. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, so I, I kind of felt almost vindicated in a way, but, but then at the same time, slightly pissed off, I suppose, because it's mm-hmm. like, because there's nothing, there's nothing. Well, what, what can we do? What can you do for me? Well, not a lot. You know, um, you I, I, you know, you I don't even remember what what advice I was given by my GP because it, it was probably so minimal that that I, I I don't know I was probably doing it all anyway without even thinking about it because mm-hmm. I was so unwell that you know I I couldn't do a lot you know if she said to me well don't do a lot of exercise for instance. Um, I, well, I couldn't have done that anyway. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that she might not even have said that because that year I there was a gym that opened around the corner for me, and I started going, uh, and I actually really enjoyed it. But I think I managed about three sessions, and then I had an almighty crash. Mm. Um, so yeah, I I think just yeah relieved because at least you've got a label if you like. Um, but at the same time probably annoyed because there's, there's, there's no treatment totally did you try lots of things before you joined our program or did you just go straight to our program i think i, I probably tried a few things but no I, I think um you know i think i came to the program pretty quick you know probably pr- pretty quickly i think i looked at other programs but just thought yeah they're, they're just not really I, I, they just didn't seem to be the right fit what made, um, what made you join our program? What was it that drew you to it, like just out of interest? I think it was you. I think it was your manner. Um, I, I uh, you know, you, there's it doesn't to me. It, it you're not patronising or, um, I I just seem drawn to you, and my mum was the same. Um, we we just liked just like your personality, your delivery, the way you talked about what it's like to have it, and uh, you know, I, yeah, I think it was it was probably just that to be honest. Yeah, um, and, and did you like resonate? Th- and thank you, like I appreciate that. Um, uh, did you resonate with like the baseline stuff, the like the holistic approach and the plan and the practicality? Yeah. Because I think yeah, yeah. Like, that's what miss yeah. that's what's missing. Like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, after I joined the programme, um, uh, sort of all the, um, well, in the early days, because I joined in the very early days, you know, but there was still a lot of the practical stuff and, and there was the, you know, the downloads and the printouts for the baseline and, yeah. and, and all of that. And that really helped because I found trying to find my baseline I really struggled with that and what doesn't help as you know is that I'm not a very patient person <laughs> and I, I don't like routine and I hate being told what to do so, <laughs> you're a great so, person to coach <laughs> yeah yeah I'm like your worst nightmare um, no I don't like being told what to do if I think it's a lot of nonsense um makes sense yeah interestingly all, all the girls in my family in that photo we're all we're all similar you know my granny was the same no nonsense sort of um so yeah so I, I i did struggle with the baseline bit of things because it just it's like uh oh, it's it just seems like it's never ending you know you, you sort of think you found it and then you crash and and then you get back on track and it's it, it always feels like it's you know four steps backward and half a step forward and and that was the sort of thing I really struggled with mm. but then of course um and the new the, the program as it is now what really helped with me was the the community mm. uh, and actually not not even for me not even just other pe- people helping me but me being able to help other people or yeah. newer members of the program that that was a real kind of boon for me um 
So yeah, and you got Dr. Olivia and her her advice was always just amazing. Um and and then even just the, the little things, the little mantras that you would come up with, like you know, little by little, a little becomes a, a lot. I used to mm-hmm. say that to myself a lot. Mm-hmm. Um and and just you know, um I don't, I, I don't know, just just the whole and even things like the little add-ons, like the guilt, the guilt workshop. Yes, um, that was did, that was that was huge for me. That was that was huge yeah, for a lot that, of people. Like I mean, yeah. that's why we did it. So for the guys who yeah. don't understand, basically every single week we have uh, individualized group coaching sessions where you can jump on, ask questions, and get coaching. And Emma, like I think one of the things that you got so much from the program was that having yeah. the ability and knowing yourself. Like you got to know yourself really well. And one of the things that you picked up on was when you're having a bad week, you kind of easily can fall off the horse easily and go quiet. But what you did is jump back on, jump in, get the right help and coaching and move forwards. But um, we brought on a guilt um, expert because, you know, it's just such an, such such an unnecessary um, feeling to experience when you're trying to recover from chronic fatigue syndrome, carrying around a really heavy backpack with rocks of guilt on your back. And it weighs you down heavily and it's kind of suffocating. And um, we see it all the time. Like it's just a huge thing that everyone, we've all, anyone who's been through chronic fatigue syndrome surely has felt that. And so we brought Mal on um, for the Guilt Expert workshop. And, and yeah, I noticed a massive change in you after you watched that. And, and so did so many other people as well. But I think, I think you're right. Like giving as well as receiving is important too, you know, and um and we always say that, you know, we have a commitment inside our program that when, you know, everyone who joins adds value to the program because not only do they get to receive support and encouragement from everyone, which you know how, like, it's just the most supportive yeah. in the bloody world. It's amazing. Yeah, um, it really is. Yeah, but also at the same time, you know, you can offer your advice and support to other people. And and it's, you know, it's really life-changing. It really, you know, your like I said, your advice to lots of people over the over that time was um, invaluable. You know, um, and we miss you. We miss you in the group, just talking and oh, posting. I mean, I yeah, I, I miss it as well. But, <laughs> but in a way, um, you kind of, I, I think I had to kind of come out because I'd done as much as I could. You know, I, I was ready. You were ready. Um, you messaged me. Yeah. You said, um, and basically what happens was basically we have our main program. And then once you're doing really well and you're kind of integrating back into life, you get invited into our lifestyle integration program, which is our up level program, which is all about life, you know, relationships, all types of stuff, but not recovery focused at all. And so you went into that once you're doing pretty well. And that's where you had a big light bulb moment, actually, about your future. And we can talk about that, actually. It might be really helpful for some other people um, who maybe are going through the same thing. And when you had that light bulb moment, I think there was about a three-month thing where you were like, you know, you, you knew everything was embodied. Like, you, you got, you understood everything that you learned. You were with us for at least 12 months. So, I think it was about... It was months. more, it, it oh, was, more. it was... Yeah, I think it was about 15 or 16 months. There you go. But a lot of that wasn't recovery focused. Like you were you were well beyond that. And what I'm, what I'm trying to say yeah. here is like a lot of our members don't stay with us for recovery. They stay with us for life because it's not about yeah. recovery anymore. It's about living their best life and enjoying it and doing things that they love. And so that's where we focus in our up-level program. But um, you messaged me and uh it was really cool i loved receiving it you you just said toby i think i'm ready <laughs> you did something like yeah. that and i and i, I don't knew, remember that and i agreed and i was like yeah i think you are too it's yeah to spread your wings like mm-hmm. it's like you're done yeah. like, you've done the work you've learned everything you needed to learn and now you just now you're just go and enjoy your life for a little bit and you know yeah. and yeah it was like spread your wings kind of thing and it, uh, it was really right. cool and I mean that's just it was just such a love I love those messages you know um so I do I do remember that um let's talk about uh this is so relevant for everybody but and we'll make it relevant for everyone but let's talk about that breakthrough that you had um in one of our coaching sessions I think it would have been in the lifestyle group and it would have been it would have like rachel um charlie nicola all those guys who mm-hmm. were up at the time and you were stuck you were frustrated you were doing really well 
but there was this uh, lag, I guess, or this feeling of frustration. And it was almost like you were stuck at this point, but you couldn't go beyond it. And I don't exactly know how the how it popped up, but um, we were talking around uh, beliefs and mindset and thoughts and uh, anything that was getting in the way, I think, and everyone had to share something. And he was like, man, I'm just so stuck. Like, I'm basically in retirement, but I'm not enjoying my retirement, you know? And, um, and you weren't enjoying the days. It was like you felt bad for mm-hmm. being retired, which... which yeah. Is a cultural thing, I think. It's, it's a societal thing, and we had a huge breakthrough that evening. And um, do you do you remember exactly what it was? No, you, if you do, you're going to have to tell. I mean, I I know I felt guilty. I felt a lot of guilt over getting the retirement. God knows why. Yeah, but I, you know, it's not like I chose it. I mean, it's it's brilliant, and I was over the moon, and I'm so grateful. But it's it wasn't a life choice. I mean, okay, who wouldn't want to be retired in their mid forties? But I'm not retired through choice, um, and I didn't get my full pension, you know. So no, but anyway, sorry, I I don't know, I, I don't know. Yeah. So basically, what happened was like you just had so much um, unnecessary. Uh, baggage on reti- on being retired and enjoying yourself and living a great life because you were actually healthy. It's just that there was this kind of parameter around you that was keeping you from living and it was basically not giving yourself permission to live fully now. Yeah, yeah. And the penny dropped. It was quite an amazing session. Every- <laughs> we were all pretty blown away. And you were like, oh, my God, I can actually like I can go and enjoy my life. And there's a quote by Wayne Dyer. I think it was um, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Yeah. And that's basically yeah. what happened in that session. And yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. It was cool. And basically, you know, cause I know you've got your pets and you're really creative and you know, you're, you're a people person, but then you also like your own time. And so, you know, you, you kind of, ha- you live a great full life and it's unique to you. Um, but I think the, the the greatest thing was just permission for yourself to, to live fully and step into it. And um, I think that's a part of recovery. I think that everyone goes through that stage where they get to this point where they're pretty good. Um, but then there's this last little bit and that's the permission to fully live. And uh, I thought it was really brilliant. And I know a lot of the other guys got a hell of a lot from it. Can you tell me... Um, Tell me like average day in the life for you now, like, you know, from where you were, you were bed bound, you, um, you know, felt like rubbish. And to now, like, you know, tell everyone your pets. <laughs> I can't, I couldn't keep oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, uh, four house rabbits. But <laughs> I did actually, I know, I did actually lose my big old boy, Johnny. Uh, he was nine and we lost him oh, about a month ago now. And that was, that was really weird because he, he was the link to the, the me before I fell ill. So I got him when I was 39. He was the link to my sort of social butterfly, sex in the city, great life, you know, uh, I know, not so much in the sex, but never mind. Um, uh, you know, 30s and, and being well, and he's been with me, you know, and, and he was the link to, you know, my, David, my friend that, that, that died, and mm. all the other friends that I've lost because they just couldn't keep up with an ill person. And, and then, you know, I lost him and there was a lot of really strange emotion around that, apart from not even just losing a nine-year-old pet. Anyways, I've got three house rabbits now. Uh, they're about to go to bunny bonding boot camp because I'm going to be getting an, at least another one, maybe two. <laughs> Don't tell my mum. <laughs> um, my mum thinks I'm crazy. So, uh, yeah, uh, an average day. Well, I mean, we've had an amazing summer here uh, in, well, in the UK. Um, so, you know, an average day would be me sitting outside in my little front garden in the sunshine, um, reading my book, drinking cups of tea, chatting to anybody that walks past, I chat to. That, that sounds like um, good. Yeah, and it's great. Um, and, uh, and then I don't know, I'll, I'll sort of uh, have my breakfast and then uh, I'm sort of getting slowly 
towards decluttering my flat and getting that sorted. So I'll do uh -huh. a bit of that. Um, I've been doing quite a lot of gardening. Um, yeah, cool. So. Yeah, and I, 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 so if I've got a bit of grass that was planted, I've got my own little patio, but there's a communal garden beyond that, and there's a bit of grass, so I, I, you know, I, I got a strimmer and I cut that, and I've been doing heavy weeding and sort of cutting back massive rose bushes and stuff. Amazing. Um, and yeah, like, and I mean, that's, like anyone who's ever like garden, it's like that's it's hard work, man. Like, yeah, it is, even for healthy people, like it's like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You feel yeah. it. It's good. It's good. It's a, it's yeah. A, um, but it's really satisfying, and also it's, it's nice being out in nature. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I might have a. I'm trying to think of things that I've been doing. Um, I discovered actually that I've got a French and Algerian neighbour just around the corner from me, and they speak French, and of course I'm part French, so. I was taking my bins out, you know, at eleven p.m. one night, and just got chatting to them in French. So we've had a, a few French nights out in the garden. Oh, uh, so that's wow. yeah. I mean, it's just um, I'm just I'm just going to uh, so um, you know I've been doing my painting classes and that's over Zoom. But it also there's a little local park, so they've been holding classes in the park. I might do. Uh, I've been cooking from scratch, um, no. cleaning. Um, sometimes I hey one second there. let's stop on the cleaning because like anyone who doesn't have chronic fatigue syndrome does not get this no I like, know no, no the fact that you can clean is actually mm -hmm. such a big sign of living yeah. and progress and doing mm -hmm. chores and so I'm sure all you guys yeah, I, mean, I, nodding, yeah. I phoned my mum and said you're not going to believe what I'm doing I'm cleaning you know, I'm, I'm dusting, the, like, properly dusting my living room and everything like I used to when I was sort of nuts and clean my flat from top to bottom every weekend. Mm. I don't do it every weekend now, but uh, I'm just, um, just looking to see. Yeah, sometimes I just get in my car and drive around the city for, like, tight, because that's the one thing that I need, I want to get over is like driving somewhere for sort of 40 minutes or, or something and, and um, I'm still a bit nervous about doing that so I just drive around the city and I've managed to do that for like an hour at a time mm. um, and that's great because Edinburgh is such a beautiful city mm. and if you're not having to be anywhere it's actually lovely just driving around um, no, yeah. and like that's the other thing is like you're just retraining your your brain to to because driving is a stressful thing when you haven't done much yeah. for a while so yeah um yeah so that that's great and i mean yeah. the fact that you're just like socializing and living again and yeah. out at 11 p.m with the bins and talking french night and not worrying about yeah. what time it is and no, no. That, you know that's the that's the big thing is that i don't worry anymore i don't I don't really have a lot of fear anymore and and you know I've booked tickets to see I'm, I'm going to see various big bands um this year and then next year I'm really excited because I'm going to see RuPaul's Drag Race with my best friend Epic. um you're like what is RuPaul's Drag Race it's awesome Sounds good <laughs> yeah just google it it's amazing um <laughs> okay. so uh yeah um I'd uh, I'm, I've joined sort of two virtual um, book groups so I'm reading two novels a month I'm wow a book. yeah uh, I'm reading right. I'm currently Actually, reading this which I, I've I, always uh, that, this is about 600 and odd pages yeah. long and that's where I am well in a month oh no oh god no this is this is taking oh my me a god, while I was gonna so, say. but I can read maybe two books in a month in yeah a month. and then i do the boot groups yeah that, um, that is huge because you you had really bad brain fog when you started yeah that. you yeah, couldn't read it a like a couple of pages yeah yeah no 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 i mean i, I yeah i mean actually i wrote down I, I don't i don't have the insomnia anymore um my brain fog has gone i don't have any pain i hardly ever i'm fatigued and if i am it's like normal tiredness well, that's right from um, gardening or being yeah you know. yeah uh-huh 
Um, I mean, my, st- my sleep still isn't always brilliant, but it's, it's, it's not what it was. Um, oh, you know, your sleep was horrendous when you started. Oh, with- yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I, I would be up till like nine o'clock in the morning, like yeah, no sleep yeah. at all. And go, um, like, this is like, I think that's an important t- um, thing to quickly mention is like, because most people who don't have chronic fatigue syndrome again, they think that they just people just sleep all the time. But what happens is you go through that phase of total exhaustion and sleeping, and then you go swing to the other op- other way, which yeah. is like irritable sleeping. And um, we had to really reverse that. And we, I remember specifically, we had a couple of sessions purely on sleep for you. Yeah. And in the yeah. back end of the program, there's modules that you can work on as well. But specifically, coaching with you was around reversing your sleep cycle so you could get back into a healthy routine because there were days where you'd start at like two or two or three o'clock in the afternoon and i was like well yeah that's no wonder you're feeling like shit you know like there's no you know so but what i want to mention is it took time but look at look at the like how much it was worth it it was worth the time yeah 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 Yeah, totally yeah and actually I, i don't remember the last time i had a big massive crash in february but i was really stupid and um, there were a lot of warning signs and I was ignoring them um, and I was doing yoga you know over zoom and once a week and I was going out in the snow for great big long walks uh, you know like an hour long walk and I did that for about three weeks and then I had a huge crash and um, I you know I was speaking to Charlie about it and she said you, you, you were ignoring the signs um, but you'll never crash like that again Mm. but I don't that was I don't get any signs like that anymore now but but that's because I I behave more like a normal person so if I'm tired I go to bed and <laughs> don't sleep late any you know I'm not a normal person but no but um, it's true like it's like you're it's this is what people don't get like you just you, you're just a healthy you're just operating as a healthy what would a normal yeah. what would a normal healthy person do okay well if they've got a cold and a flu well then they rest yeah that's right yeah. You know, it's, um, yeah, that's really cool. But uh, then equally, a lot of people don't. You know, in sort of Western society, you're taught to push through. Yes. Um, and, and so having had this illness, I've learned you don't push through. Um, you, you don't ignore your body. You listen to what your body is telling you. Um, and, that you know, that that's one of the, the biggest lessons I think I've learned. And that probably is, is what is the the biggest thing that helps recovery you know or one of the biggest things is is just listening to what your body's telling you um, and don't ignore it i remember one one friend that that has the illness and and she's very unwell um and uh, she's had it for several years now and she looks very unwell and i remember she she messaged me and i think i was maybe really fighting to try and stay in work and and um she messaged me and she said don't don't push yourself like I did or you'll end up like me and that that in itself was a big wake-up call for me because I thought I really you know no offense to her but I don't want to end up like that Mm. she wouldn't have wanted that for anybody um and I always had that at the back of my mind and and then you when I when I went off sick two years ago for the final time I actually thought then I'm going to have to leave work because this is going to kill me, um, you know, but but then you had the support within your programme about, I could talk to people who had left work um, and what they had gone through with it and how they had managed it. So in addition to all the the sort of the, the, the CFS health programme side of things, you have, again, that strong community that can talk to you about daily living or things like work and, and that sort of thing that, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and everyone, and everyone's situation is different. Like we have so many people at the moment who are, we even have people working full time. We have people who run their own companies um, and some of them can, you know, downgrade their work time that is useful and manageable and appropriate for them. But then others, we've had two people lately who have, uh, courageously quit their job um, yeah. as a short-term thing to focus purely on their health mm-hmm. and yeah. already you've seen the swing about you've seen it with some of the other members in the program you know they're back working but they're doing it in a in a healthier way and they're enjoying yeah. it again. And, um, you know it's it's so mm-hmm. sometimes it's a short-term pain for long-term gain um, mm-hmm. 
we mentioned, we were chatting when we were organizing this interview, I said, um, what's next for you? And, and I was like, you know, because I'm like, oh, you're going to get bored soon. Like, you're going to have to start finding a job. And you said, oh, yeah, I'm actually starting to look now, but like, I'm going to keep enjoying my life for a little bit longer and then I'll get back into yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's funny, actually, because, you know, I, I uh, sort of live in an area of Edinburgh. It's got its own little shop in High Street and, and whatnot. And uh, the sort of the local, um, there's a little tiny supermarket around the corner and they were advertising a job that was like 16 hours a week. Um, and I wouldn't work there because I think it would be hellish to work there. But I did, I actually looked at the job ad and thought, I could do that. Oh, yeah. Um, and but then there was a bit of me that thought, yeah, but do you really want to? Do you really want to go back to work and and all the this the, the hassle that comes with work and dealing <laughs> with other human beings in a manner that you you know you don't necessarily want to at the moment? And I, I mean, I'm so lucky because I got my retirement. I have the choice. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know, but then I think also having had this sort of illness you, you 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 start to make better choices for yourself anyway um so you you might i mean i i was sort of looking last night at a thing for um i, I don't know how it work i need to look into it but it's sort of spending a couple of hours a couple of times a week with elderly people to help them live in their own home oh, and nice. i thought oh god i could i would volunteer to do that and this is like a paid job but I, you know yeah. Yeah, aha, uh-huh. and I have thought I would quite like to do something like that, um, yeah. rather than the sort of office stuff that I did before that I loved. I really enjoyed it. It was great. Yeah, but well, I don't want to do that now. What came to me when you were saying this was alignment, and yeah, and you know values. We have the whole values program, which we mm-hmm. teach in the program in lifestyle integration, where we we help you identify what you value, and then for you to build a, a life with your values yeah. it, that you actually can go and pursue and it's life-changing. And so what's happening for you now is it's purely just alignment. Like you said, like now it's like, well, I could do the job. Like I know I could do it, but I'd probably not enjoy it. And so that's just alignment. And, mm-hmm. and ultimately like that's kind of really important to stay true to yourself. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I think that's, you know, why people, uh, end up kind of in such bad ways is because they haven't been true to themselves for a long time yeah it's been ignoring uh many things in their lives and you know um it sometimes takes uh, an experience like this to make you yeah really look at it and um make some healthy changes and healthy choices um what What's your life like now on a scale of one to 10 compared to back then? Like, oh, com- compared to the first year when I was bed bound, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like, my, one of my rabbits is just sort of taking a drink of water and then oh. shaking himself. He's got water everywhere. Yeah. Uh, can you bring um, him another? Can, can will, I what? Will the rabbit you come? You want out? to see him? Yeah. Um, this is very impromptu, but if you only if you can, if it's not a big deal, I can get I can get one. Get one. Um, <laughs> I'll get one. We want to say. Uh, oh, here we go. Oh, hello. it's my little tiny boy, little Bocco. Bocco. He's not impressed, but some Bocco B O K K O. Sometimes he might like my nose if I'm lucky. No. <laughs> oh, he's cute. Yeah. I know he's gorgeous. He's he's ten. Wow. But he's tiny. Amazing. Um, We're all about pets. Yeah. Well. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, I, I would be lost if I hadn't had them. I think they gave me purpose and and you know, a reason. Um, and they're great company. They're they're really good company. So uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Good. Although I, I should say rabbits aren't easy pets. Don't go out and get a rabbit because they're not easy to look after. <laughs> um, get one. Get one as you're getting healthy. Um, oh yeah, yeah, a cuddly toy. So, M, um, I've got two questions before we wrap up. The first question is, if someone's looking, you know, whether they're 15 years old or 80 years old, and because you know we've had super young people in our program and grandmas in our program, yeah. What would you say to someone who's just like looking at looking at CFS Health Recovery Program? They're arming and ahhing. They're like scared of joining because they're not sure if it's going to work. Like, what would you say to them? No, I, I just just 
do it, do it. You get one life and you certainly don't want a life with, with this, this illness because um, that's not a life. Um, no, I, I, I just, if you're humming and an eyeing, then, you know, I just, just go for it because you really won't regret it. Um, there's just, there's, so, there's, like you say, it's the holistic approach is everything. And, um, you know, everybody's different. So for me, it was more, I needed more help with the emotional and mental side of things and whatnot. But for other people, it's the practical stuff, but also it's the community that you've built there as well. And I mean, I've stayed in touch. I've made friends with, with people, um, you know, like Charlie, we have a Zoom call every fortnight or as often as we can. Mm. Um, and when I'm finally able to, to have my big retirement party, they're both like, yeah, we're both coming. And I sort of say, yeah, but you're, you're 300 miles away. Why would you? Why? It's like, because. Why wouldn't we? Um, so, yeah, I, I just I just wouldn't. Don't hesitate because then you're just wasting time. Um, and you're not helping yourself. And, and just, yeah, yeah. Was, Go for was, it. Was the, was the investment worth it for you? Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, and I know, you know, not everybody might have the, the money um, to be able to do it. So, but, you know, a lot of the stuff that's on you and if you can't financially do it, then I would say just follow you, just follow the advice that you put out there on your YouTube channel yeah. and, and watch the videos of like me and I know a gilded one as well. Um, and, and just try and be inspired by us and, and believe us when we say how ill we were. Um, I mean, I, I could, I don't have it to hand, but I could send you, well, there probably are photos of me in the group of, you know, when I was really, really unwell. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I just look, totally, I look like a different person. Yeah, you do. Yeah, 100% do. Um, yeah. yeah. And there is, there's so much free advice, free videos on YouTube. I mean, what you see on YouTube is like, one percent of what you get in the program our program that's right is, yeah like yeah. it's a it's totally different right like it's a step yeah. step program it's it's not information it's we're, we're it's really helping you from every step and the problem is like there's like 30 hours of coaching in those videos alone just in the program yeah. videos, you know step by step and then you know the weekly group coaching which is right, about yeah. keeping you accountable and making sure you're applying and actually implementing the work which is i think the most important thing and i think that was the biggest difference for you it was it was keeping me accountable because you know you know I easily step off track because I, I get bored easily as well so um you know that really helped and, and then sort of what's your intention going to be you had a set intentions for the week and then reporting in you know at, at the end of the week yeah. um I, I bet you know even if somebody had had a bad week and not managed to sort of complete the intention it was like well that's fine you know and, and next week will be different or but but also not even that it was just well just remember you don't know what's going on in your body at a very very low basic level and even though you think you've had a bad week and all the rest of it there's stuff going on I mean you know I, I can say that now because look at me now so there's there are if you're doing the program and and you're you know you're trying your best you're, you're and you're, you're looking after your your you're trying your best to, with your sleep and your nutrition and, and whatnot and the emotional side of things. Um, and, and, you know, the, the mental, all the sort of that side of things helped me. It's like your quote, if you, what was it? If you change how you view things, things change. Yeah, it changes how you, yeah, what you look yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And a lot of people have said, you know, when I first fell ill, I sort of would say to me that I had recovered, but, you know, we'd say, um, I'm actually really grateful that I got this. Mm. And I used to think, oh, well, I, well, that's just rubbish. But then I started to think, actually, I am as well. Um, yeah. And I am now um, because it's completely, it's completely changed my life for the better. And, and mm -hmm. my, you know, I'm a much more positive person now. I was always bordering on the, the glass is half empty, but I'm not like that now. Wow. Um, wow. And um, I'm, I'm, I try to be, I think I'm a lot more understanding of, of people and less judgmental than, than I used to be. Um, yeah, it, it's just, but yeah, I would say if you're swithering, why are you swithering? Just go for it. Because mm -hmm. uh, you could be ill for a long time 
or you could be ill for a much shorter length of time, but because you, you've done the programme, you get you come out on the other side. Mm. Amazing. Yeah. But yeah, the investment was definitely worth it for me. I wouldn't have, I, I wouldn't, and I mean, my mum says that as well. We often used to say, where would we be without Toby? Uh, and, and the programme, and all the people that I met in the, you know, in the programme. Um. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know where, where I would be, um, if, 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 if would not, if I'd not found the program. It's as simple as that. Mm. I don't think I would be recovered. Mm. I don't, I don't know that I would be as bad as I was the very first year I was ill, mm. because that year I was trying to stay in work and I was really, really pushing, but I, I, um, I don't think I would be where I am now. And I, I think a lot of people would actually say that. I know that I've done the programme. I know Charlie would say it. Annie mm. Gill um, and Nicola. Mm. Um, These are all our mem- some of our members in our lifestyle group. Um, yeah. I just want to give you a big hug because yeah. you're, making, you're making me a bit teary. Um, you yeah. know, you, you put in a lot of work, you know? Yeah, but I had good support. You did. Um, but, you know, you, you put in you put in the work and um you 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 stayed through and like you said you know it's easy to fall off track it's easy to get bored and yeah yeah you know and I always say this to people like success doesn't care about boredom you know like people who are successful in any endeavor they do you know boredom's not a word for them like they don't let things distract them they don't let um, yeah, distractions get in the way, procrastination. Yes, they fall off track. Yes, sometimes they do um, bad behaviours that don't help them, but they always come back and they get back on track and they, they get the right support and help and then they just do the work. And yeah. I always say, like, success leaves clues and you said it perfectly before, like, you, you, know, you know, go and watch all the other interviews too and learn from people. And um, it's actually really great that there's all this information out there for other people to follow and um success leaves clues like you know you reversed your sleep cycle you got your nutrition right you got your mindset right you let go of a hell of a lot of baggage you let go of a hell of a lot and that all those recipes then created the the result of where you're at now you know and that's it that's a very simplified version of it but yeah you know. I mean, it, it is. It, it was hard work. It is hard work. Mm-hmm. Um, and and you know, there's there's a there's a lot. I mean, I had a lot of grief. I think the other thing I would say, you know, doing the program is, and I know everybody's not an open book like I am, but you 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 won't get as much if you don't ask questions. Good you off. know, you don't yeah. ask. You you have to kind of be a bit more of an open book, and I. I even I struggled with that. I mean, I remember one session that stuck out in my mind was when there was a lot of grief. You know, I don't know if you remember it, but it was round about the time, it was coming up to the time when my, my David, my friend, had, had died. It was the anniversary of that. And, and there was just all this, that was what was kind of setting it off. But then there was a, everything else was coming into the mix as well. And I remember not really wanting to speak about that, but then I did. Um, and and I, and I think a, a lot of the other a lot of what you say about you know you would say a lot you're human it's human it's human to to fall off the horse it's human to have a bad day but it doesn't make you a bad person and it's normal um you know even sort of millionaire entrepreneurs have bad days and it is just it's that is normal and also um, like a, a bad you know, a bad day doesn't have to equal a bad week or a bad morning doesn't have to equal. No, a bad that, yeah, aha, uh-huh, that's right. That's mm-hmm. right. Or even about the fact, one of the other, one of the first things I learned from you was actually, and it was getting right back to basics, but it was just take each hour as it comes. What can I do in this hour that will help me and how I'm feeling for now? And yeah. then make it through that hour. And then the next hour, okay, where is there anything that you, you know, and again, it's all about, yeah. And I, for me, it was almost the little things, the littlest things like that, that, that helped as much as the bigger coaching sessions and, and whatnot, although they were always yeah. amazing. And you don't realise it at the time, though. That's, this is the crazy part. Like, people don't get it and they think, oh, you know, I don't need that. But when they start doing it, 
and they do it regularly, they start to notice results and have more energy and you know they can yeah. read you know like you now like reading two books in a month like yeah i know i mean i love it because i am a big reader and i always have been yeah, yeah i remember i yeah. remember you did a big um post in the group because we have our wins every friday but one of your wins was um you know you read one of your favorite books that you always wanted to read you know um which was really cool yeah now, now yeah. um to to wrap this up just any you know, thank you so much like this has been such a great conversation i think it would have been uh, well, it is so insightful for so many people. Is there any last words you'd like to leave anyone who, um, you know, is just sitting here watching going, yeah, man, I, you know, I want my, I want my life back. I think, um, I think acceptance is, is, is key. Don't, don't fight, don't push, uh, you know, and, and just, um, well, you know, I mean, I would say join the program, but but just um, you can, you can do it. You can get well again, and and don't look at me and think, yeah, you were never you were never that bed bound person. Sort of four years ago or whatever, I was. Well, five years ago now actually, um, I was, but um, you know, it is possible. It is possible to recover, and um. Yeah, I, I, God, you, you're asking me that, and actually, I, I don't know what to say. That's rare for me. Um, I like the acceptance, I, though. Like, I think, yeah, I think that is really important. Like, it's not you're not saying acceptance of like this is it. It's acceptance of where I'm at right now, so you can start yeah. the work on you. Like, start just helping yourself now. Yeah, important, yeah, which I think is a big one. Yeah, I think it's great. Advice. And I think make sure there's there's make sure there's joy in your life, whatever it is. Just, just you know, what whatever. I mean, if you're completely bed bound, there's there's maybe not much you can do. I, I, I don't know. Um, but but I think the completely bed bound part for me, I, I I think for the majority of people that won't last. You know, there's there's a few people that I suppose it does, but but you know that that won't last. You, I, I think the thing to remember is you won't be where you are forever and you know if you're having a really bad day now or a bad hour now that that won't be forever yeah. and once upon a time I would have heard somebody say that and think oh bugger off you're just talking rubbish but it is it is true it, it really is mm. um and everybody has bad days everybody the other thing that you used to say was even normal healthy people have that you know so yeah, so yeah. that oh, that was the street and people are yawning and they're, they're waking up groggy and um yeah the, the problem is what happens is there's normal tiredness and cfs tiredness and yeah that's um, right and as you get healthier you need to start to uh, differentiate between the two and yeah and then you know like you said now you're recovered but you still get tired which is appropriate mm -hmm. after you have, you know, I mean, we want to be tired by the end of the day. <laughs> That's Yeah, what... oh, definitely, or you won't sleep. I mean, but, but <laughs> I've had, uh, like, sort of, I've got cousins that, that live sort of four or 500 miles away and we have Zoom sessions. And uh, I, I've sat up till five o'clock in the morning drinking um, <laughs> and having, yeah, see, where well, you can just imagine. Um, and... Um, you know, and and then I've thought, shit, I might, and this is quite recently, I, I, there's still a little bit, sometimes at the back of my mind that thinks, shit, I'm going to crash, because, and I don't, I don't, I'm just, I'm hungover and I feel like hell, but that's <laughs> because, well, who wouldn't, you know, um, that's because I've been up until 5am drinking, and, uh, you know. And because your um, body and health is resilient, so it's not mm -hmm. like something that yeah. you want to do continuously but like oh, no. it's good to know that you know you can you're you're basically your body's adapted and it can yeah. handle adaptation but yeah we do not yeah. recommend that at home guys so please don't definitely not that, no, that, no. Is, that is uh, a great sign <laughs> good <laughs> it's a yeah, great don't, good don't, don't do that kids don't do that, don't do that at home but, no. you know, I mean, I suppose, celebrating yeah, the other thing I actually it's just um but but the reason that these things have helped me as well is because they're joyful things and that gets the endorphins going which you know helps with recovery as well so the mm. more joyful things you can do forget about the cleaning forget about the your, your cluttered home and you know 
that that doesn't matter you you'll get to that when you recover it's not important for now what's important for now is joy because in turn that gets all the feel good hormones going and that all you know helps as well uh, both physically and mentally and and that was something i had difficulty with just giving my permission to do joyful things yeah. um but you know what's the point in being ill and miserable and then making yourself even more miserable if you're not having any fun or any joy or anything like that it's you've got to you've got to put it in there and like that's the thing you know that's in our program we that's what we coach on we have a whole plan yeah. every month now on purely yeah. just um setting the month up ahead of what we're focusing on specifically for each yeah. individual but then also at least picking one thing um out of the three focuses that is going to actually give us some energy um you know and uh, fulfillment because yeah it's just on a small level so um you've and ran- you have permission to do that you know give give yourself permission again that's a, it's a western thing you know if you're not working you're a bad person if you're not keeping mm-hmm. your house clean or or you know looking after your children then you're a bad mum I mean it just it's, mm-hmm. it's crazy but it is how we are programmed to think nowadays and we don't give ourselves permission to do something nice for ourselves you know have a bath or sit and read a book or a, a pain we, we just don't mm-hmm. um and I think that's that's yeah that that's a big part of it is give yourself permission to do stuff like that that's great there you go guys that's i think we'll end it there that's perfect give yourself permission to just be mm-hmm. and enjoy thanks so much emma it's to yourself, been a, no. treat yourself yeah it's uh, yeah no it's been a real uh, pleasure and um yeah i'm just i'm really proud of you i, I know where you've Thank come you. from and i've seen you do the work and it's just so nice to see you enjoying life and um yeah mm-hmm yeah so. and hopefully this helps you know it helps people yeah i'm sure it will yeah yeah mm-hmm. so guys uh, guys who are watching um we'll leave some resources down below some free resources to help you get started on your recovery uh, and if you want to join the program you can put in an application um in through a link there as well on on uh, i think it's cfshealth.com slash form and we'll send you some information on how it all works but thanks again emma it's been bloody brilliant as always and I'm sure, it's, uh, I'm sure it's given a lot of people hope as well um you know to get back into life and start living again i hope so thanks for asking me thanks champion and hopefully hopefully i didn't blather good scottish no we did well i was expecting a two-hour conversation i reckon we've done under an hour which is good <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm proud of you all right thanks, thank you okay. cheers bye love 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 <laughs>